Nissan GTR. That name is a legend in the world of motoring and it's really popular among tuners. Now the first Nissan GTR was actually released back in 1969 and since then there have been six different generations. The last one, the R35, was introduced way back in 2007 so it sort of overstayed its welcome. Well don't worry, there's a new one coming, a seventh generation GTR and in this video I'm going to tell you all about it. Anyhow, I'm Matt Watson and you're watching CarWow. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Before we get into this video, I've got a quick question for you. What is your favourite Nissan GTR? Well, if you're a Gen Z, it's probably the current one, the R35. It's the one that's available now and you've probably seen it in our videos. Now, if you're a millennial, you probably grew up with the Fast and the Furious movies and therefore your favourite GTR will be the R34. However, if you're an old Gen X like me, you grew up with Gran Turismo, the original. And that had the R33 in it. That's my favourite. Speaking of Gran Turismo, in the Gran Turismo 6 game, there is a clue to what the R36 will look like. You see, in that game, there's a car called the Nissan Concept 2020 Vision Gran Turismo, which looks like this. And that car is likely to inspire the next row-going GTR, which could look like this. Now, I'm going to give you a moment to just take it all in. Right, you done that? Okay, what I've done is put a pinned comment to this video. I want you to let me know what you think of the design of this car. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Let me know. All right, I will check and probably comment back. Anyway, whatever you think of it, this R36 has some massive shoes to fill. You see, when the R35 came out back in the day, it was classed as the bargain supercar killer. For instance, it had 480 horsepower, which is exactly the same as a Porsche 911 Turbo. However, the R35 GTR cost £58,000. The Porsche, £100,000. So the GTR was just over half the price of the Porsche. Trouble is, over the years, Porsche and supercar makers increased their horsepower. And so Nissan had to play catch up and so it had to increase its GTR's horsepower. As a result, it got more expensive, and today the current GTR has 570 horsepower and costs over 80,000 pounds. Hmm. Now, when you compare that to a Porsche 911 Turbo, which has 580 horsepower, that costs 140,000 pounds. So when you do the maths, once again, it's just over half the price of a Porsche 911 Turbo for similar performance. That's the entry-level car, right? There are some other Nissan GTRs. The Nismo, for instance, which is over £170,000, despite only having 30 horsepower more than a standard car. Why the extra cost? Uh, well, some extra body bits and carbon fibre and trick wheels, bigger brakes, different suspension, that kind of thing. And rarity. And if you want rarity from your GTR, there is the Ital Design 50, which has completely bespoke bodywork and some more upgrades and over 700 horsepower. Though, they're over a million pounds. And you're not going to get one because there's only 50, hence the name. However, price and power aren't really the issue for the current standard R35. There are some other things at play here, one of which is safety. You see, the current R35 doesn't actually meet certain side impact protection requirements for the Australian market which means they can't sell it there anymore. And this is why we know there is an R36 coming, because Nissan's marketing director in Australia said, don't worry about the R35 going off sale, because this is not the end of the GTR story in Australia. Yeah, we'll take that as the biggest hint that a new R36 is on its way. However, the forthcoming car is going to be very different to the things that have gone before it. And I think that's a good time for a quick GTR history lesson. Let's start at the beginning, 1969. The first GTR was based on a Skyline Coupe. However, it had a race-tuned two-litre straight-six engine which pumped out a colossal 160 horsepower. It was the first super saloon. 20 years before the BMW E30 M3 arrived. Just saying, Germany, right? Get back in your box. The second generation GTR appeared in 1973 and once again it used a 2 litre straight six race tuned engine with 160 horsepower that was in the latest Skyline Coupe body. 
Now that car is very rare. Reason being that they only made 200 of them because of the fuel crisis or sort of put pay to high performance saloons. I say saloons, it's coupe, but you know what I mean. Nissan clearly got their fingers burned by the fuel crisis. The, you know, once bitten, twice shy. As a result, they didn't release another GTR until 1989, when the legendary R32 was born. Once again, based on a Skyline Coupe, but this one was built from the outset to go racing, and racing it went. It dominated the Japanese touring cars from 1990 to 1993, where it won every single race it entered. It even won the famous Australian Bathurst 1000 race, and that's where it earned the nickname Godzilla. You can imagine the Aussies seeing it just destroy all the other cars, going, Struth, mate, that Japanese car is like Godzilla. Rubbish Australian accent. Sorry, Australians, please don't unsubscribe. Blumming pom. Ever since then, every single GTR since has been hugely successful in the Japanese Super GT racing series. Thing is, though, the new R36 won't be. Ooh. Don't worry though, it doesn't mean that the R36 is going to be too crap for racing. It's because the rules have changed. So back in the day, the race car had to mirror a road car, which means that if you wanted a massive turbo on your racing car, you also had to have a massive turbo on your road car. It's different now. For instance, <laughs> the relationship between road and race car is quite loose. For instance, a privateer racer entered a Toyota Prius into the series, only it was fitted <laughs> with a mid-mounted V8 from a Lexus. I like the sound of that. Also, Honda's factory racing car, which is an NSX, may look like the road car, but it's actually front-engined, not mid-engined. And anyway, Nissan already have a car which they compete with in the Super GT, and it's based on the new Z. Also, it's got a two-litre four-cylinder engine. You're not going to get a two-litre four-cylinder engine in the next GTR, are you? be like putting a two-litre four-cylinder engine in something like a Mercedes AMG C63. Oh, wait a minute. Anyway, GTRs have always had a six-cylinder engine. And the most famous is the RB26, which is a 2.6-litre twin-turbo, which first appeared in the R32. When the R32 was released, Nissan said its engine produced 276 horsepower because that was like a gentleman's agreement in Japan not to make cars with more horsepower than that for the road. You know, a bit like the Germans have that whole 155 mile an hour thing going on. However, as the engine was developed over time for the R33 and the R34, the actual horsepower was more along the lines of 330 horsepower. And the race car versions had even more, up to 600 horsepower. And to put that into perspective, that's only about 100 horsepower down from a 1990s Formula One car. For the R35, Nissan continued with the six cylinder theme, though it ranged them in a V rather than in line. Also, increased the capacity somewhat to 3.8 litres. Out the window went the Japanese gentleman's agreement, and in came 480 horsepower. Now, Nissan has developed this engine slightly over the years. Now it's putting out 570, but it's such a tough engine that you can modify them in terms of like exhaust, ECU tunes, and turbo upgrades. And without any modifications to the internals of the engine, you can get them up to 800 horsepower. If you're willing to do stuff inside the engine itself, you know, 1,000 horsepower, 1,500 horsepower, that's all possible, completely fine. In fact, do you want to see some tuned R35s drag racing? Of course you do. You can just click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below to watch my drag race video. It is quite scary for me. Ah! Ah! I tell you what would be scary for you, the word hybrid. Mm. Nissan could be considering hybridizing the R36. But don't worry, they're not going to do a downsized thing like Mercedes with the C63. It's likely they could actually use the 3.8 litre V6, but just use hybridization to improve the overall fuel economy to hit emissions targets. You see, Nissan has already dabbled with hybridizing a high performance twin turbo V6. They used one in their GTR LM Nismo, which raced, or tried to race at least, in the 2015 Le Mans. It wasn't very successful. You see, it was so complicated. Rather than using batteries for the hybridization system, they used some kind of crazy flywheel and nursery nonsense. Anyway, didn't work particularly well. So it's much more likely that for a future hybrid GTR road car, they just play it safe and go with a normal battery for a hybrid system. 
Now Nissan has quite a lot of experience with batteries and electric motors and the very latest offering is the Aria SUV which uses a 217 horsepower motor for the rear axle. Now Nissan could use that motor in a GTR, mate it to a V6 engine to produce a combined output of easily over 700 horsepower. In fact, Nissan are already playing around with the motors from the area in some single-seater race car. Obviously, with all that power, you're going to need four-wheel drive, and four-wheel drive has been a signature of the GTR ever since the R32, hasn't it? And in the latest R35, the four-wheel drive system was quite complex. For instance, that four-wheel drive system sends power first to the back, then forward again to the front wheels, and it has a transaxle gearbox. All very confusing, uh, mechanically complex, especially if something goes wrong. With a hybrid system, you don't really need that. You could just have the internal combustion engine powering the rear wheels, maybe boost it with an electric motor, and then have some electric motors on the front. A setup which sounds rather familiar. I think Honda might have used that setup for the NSX and, and Ferrari with the new SF90. Works quite well in terms of performance anyway. Now all this new tech will add to the car's weight. So the current GTR tips the scales at 1,750 kilos with all the hybrid stuff, rear wheel stuff and all that extra gubbins, this new car could be heavier. It'll also be more expensive. Thing is though, it's still gonna be considerably cheaper than other V6 hybrid performance cars, such as the McLaren Altura, which is 180,000 pounds, or the Ferrari 296 GTB, which is 230,000 pounds. So when you consider this, regardless of what happens, the GTR will still continue to be the bargain supercar killer. Hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. If you want to watch some other videos, click on the windows there. And if you click on that box there, you can go to Carwow to sell your car. All you have to do is upload some photos of your car, brief description, and our dealers will bid on your car to make sure you get a fair price for it. And they'll come to your house, take it away, and put the cash in your bank. Simple.